This large spring is one of the most well-known features of South Central Missouri's Hahatonka State Park. What's less well appreciated is the outsized influence of one narrow rock formation, the Gunter Sandstone, on many aspects of the park. It's helped shape this spring, the park's karst landscape, its extensive wildflower glades, and even its historic structures. Learning to recognize the Gunter in its role is a great way to enhance a visit to this popular park, but its influence extends well beyond Hahatonka, affecting caves, springs, and karst features throughout much of the Ozarks. Most visitors have seen this sandstone in the park's historic buildings, as it was quarried on site. In fact, the formation's name probably derives from the small town of Gunter served by this old sandstone post office, now within the park. But it's also present along virtually every trail in the park, where its sparkling sand grains and distinctive structural features help it stand out despite being only about 25 feet thick. So let's look more closely where this layer fits into the park's geology. Ahatanka is underlain by three geologic formations, as seen in this geologic map showing which rocks appear at the surface. Most of the park's rocks are dolomite, a carbonate rock similar to limestone that was deposited in warm, shallow seas. These formations straddle the boundary between two geologic time periods, with the older, Cambrian-aged Eminence formation giving way to the younger, overlying Ordovician-aged Gasconade and Rubidoux formations. The latter only appears in small patches at the highest elevations within the park, and isn't relevant for the rest of this video. But what about the Gunter Sandstone? This occurs at the very base of the Gasconade Formation. It's not mapped separately because it's considered part of the Gasconade by the people who make such decisions. This sandstone essentially marks the transition from the Cambrian to the Ordovician time period, and from the Eminence to the Gasconade Formations. It also represents a brief retreat in sea level during the transition into the Ordovician period, before a subsequent rise started depositing marine limestone again. The dolomites of the Eminence and Gascony formations are honestly pretty similar in appearance and composition, fitting as their depositional environments were very similar, and it can be hard to tell them apart along the park's trails. Could you tell the difference between the Eminence, shown here, and the Gasconade, shown here? Like most carbonate rocks, these are prone to being dissolved away by mildly acidic rain and groundwater, leading to the caves, springs, sinkholes, and other karst structures the Ozarks are famous for. These same two formations underlie much of the well-known Ozark National Scenic Riverways region further east, with its beautiful spring-fed Curran and Jack's Fork rivers and extensive cave systems. But let's return to the Gunter Sandstone and why it's so important at Haha Tonka and elsewhere. First, if you can recognize the Gunter, you know where you are in the geologic sequence. As we mentioned before, it crosses virtually every trail in the park, so if you see and remember its location, you can keep track of whether you're above or below it, and thus which formation you're hiking through. Now when you're looking at the Gunter in person and you want to learn to identify it, here's a couple tricks. One is that it's sandstone, it feels like sandstone. If you rub your fingers on it, it's going to feel grainy, gritty, like beach sand. Second is it has these very fine layers to it. You see these horizontal budding planes on which a sediment was laid down? There's nothing like that in the carbonate rocks above and below this. They're much more massive without structure. Look for these fine planes. Third, it often weathers to kind of this reddish color. Not always, but you don't really find this kind of reddish coloration in the carbonates above and below this. They tend to be more gray. So you can use that as a distinctive feature, though it's not consistent throughout the park. So for comparison, here's some of the carbonate rock above the sandstone. There's a few ways that make this different. One is that you see the bedding planes are much more broadly spaced. They're not as tight together as in the sandstone. Two, you can see that the texture is a lot smoother. When you try to rub your hands on this, you're not going to get a lot of sand and grit off of it, like in a sandstone. Three, you can see there's a lot of holes in here. It's very open, and this kind of porosity is what helps this carry water through, whereas the sandstone is very tight and water doesn't pass through it easily. Fourth, you can see the color of this tends to be very gray, gray or white. It doesn't have any of that red staining that you sometimes find in the sandstone. The Eminence and Gasconade dolomites are very porous and easily allow groundwater to flow through and out of the rocks. You can test this for yourself by pouring water on an outcrop and seeing how many different holes it finds to run through. In contrast, the Gunter is tightly cemented together and acts as what geologists call an aquitard, meaning it does not easily allow water to pass. Here in one of the sandstone quarries in the Gunter sandstone, this is a great place to take a look at some of the features of the rock. So, for example, here you can see some bedding planes in this. Um, and you can see that in the castle walls, too, if you take a look at the, the rock there. So this is a pretty fine-grained sandstone. I can see some 
some sand grains with my hand lens if I take a really close look, but it's also really well cemented together, meaning that it's not very porous, and that has some really important implications. In this area, the Gasconade Formation forms most of the surface rocks, so shallow groundwater tends to percolate downward until it meets the less permeable gunter. It then tends to flow sideways to emerge at seeps along the sandstone's upper boundary. Here in this quarry of the Gunter Sandstone, we're pretty high up on this slope, and yet there's this wetland behind us holding water. Uh, that's not normal for this park. Below our feet, there's still some more of that Gunter Sandstone. It is not a porous sandstone. The water just does not percolate through it. That's why it's staying here and being able to support these wetland plants and even a bullfrog that's been talking a lot. In contrast, as deeper groundwater under pressure rises up within the lower-lying eminence, it's also forced sideways beneath the gunter, forming cave systems and emerging as springs. This pattern is repeated in many locations across the deeper Ozarks. Check out our video on the current river for another example and a deeper discussion. Hahatanka is actually the westernmost expression of this pattern in Missouri. The cave systems that develop in the eminence formation can be unstable on a geologic timescale. When these collapse, the more resistant overlying Gunter sandstone often seems to form a rim around the resulting sinkholes and canyons. Hahatonka boasts an impressive collapsed cave system that manifests on the surface as a long chain of sinkholes gradually becoming larger until they open into the final Spring Branch Valley. For example, at this natural bridge, the old cave system occurs in dolomite, but looking up, you can clearly recognize the Gunter sandstone forming the rim. The same hydrologic patterns may influence where Hahatonka's beautiful glades tend to form. The fact that water drains easily through the porous Gasconade formation makes the soil environment above these rocks unusually dry, a necessary prerequisite for glade formation on sunny south-facing slopes. But at the base of the Gasconade, the glades tend to end in a belt of trees, likely due to the increased water collection above the impervious Gunter sandstone. We'll explore this relationship more fully in a different video. Another way the Gunter Sandstone interacts with the Hahatanka landscape relates to a geologic structure called the Red Arrow Fault. This is a planar feature along which the bedrock was broken and shifted, with the southwestern side of the fault dropping down relative to the northeastern side. Along the park's Turkey Pen Hollow Trail, the fault trace crosses the Gunter Sandstone numerous times, and because this rock is especially erosion resistant, it helps preserve evidence of the fault's movement and associated bedrock deformation. Now the park map marks this as the location of a fault. The problem is the way the map is read and the way some people seem to be interpreting it implies the wrong idea about where the fault actually is. So we're going to try to clear that up. What you see here is a bunch of tilted rock running like this and the creek coming across and cutting through here. Now it's easy to look at this and go, oh, if you understand that a fault is where some rocks have broken and moved, you think, okay, the crack through this rock ridge is where the fault is, like the fault runs this way. Reality is exactly the opposite. It's 90 degrees off. The actual fault is running this way. What's happened is the rocks on either side that normally are flat have been faulted like this, and they've actually been tilted sideways by the action of that fault. The actual fault valley is running forward and back right through the camera. What's happened is that's raised a rock ridge across the creek that blocks its path, and the creek has had to cut a winding trail through that rock ridge. There are a lot of other neat things about the Red Arrow Fault, but we'll explore those in another video. So at this point, you can see just how influential this narrow band of Gunter Sandstone has been on the topography, hydrology, botany, and human history of Hahatonka State Park. It influences the locations of caves, springs, and sinkholes. It affects how and where groundwater moves beneath forests and glades. It provides a convenient marker for locating yourself in the geologic column and for recognizing the Red Arrow Fault. And it provided an excellent and attractive building stone for the park's iconic structures. Understanding the Gunter Sandstone will help you better appreciate not only Hahatonka State Park, but the landscape and history of some of the Ozarks' most treasured regions.